Hiya, my name is Lisa Lamb of SoLisaLamb.com and today I'm going to talk to you about what this is. So um, many sewing machines these days come with a metal attachment wiry looking thing that looks like this. And what it is, is a quilting guide bar. So um, my machine is the Memory Craft 9450 QCP by uh, Genomi. Uh, and it indeed did come with a guide bar, the quilt guide bar. And what I've used it for is to quilt this lovely William Moss fabric. And you can see I've quilted it with these absolutely perfect square, one inch square diamonds. So the diamonds are at a perfect 45 de degree angle. And uh, I must say, even though I'm not a quilt expert, I'm very pleased with how the diamonds look. They're neat and they're regular, none are wonky, and it's all made so much easier by this super helpful gadget. So, how do we use them? Okay, right, so, you'll find that on the shank of your um, machine, which the foot attaches to, there should be a hole there should be a hole that you might have wondered, what is that hole actually for? So I'm going to point to that hole with the tip of my curl bar. So on the shank, it, mine is at the back here and it's lined in plastic. What you're going to do is you're going to take the pointed end. So one end has got a hook. The other end has got a point of the bar. You're going to push the pointed end through the hole on the shank and it'll be a snug fit. It has to be because once you've pushed it in position to the measurement that you want, which I'll talk about in a minute, it must not be able to jiggle out again. So that's why it's a tight squeeze. And you can just see the tip moving in and out here. Right now. So why is it adjustable? Well, let's just say you wanted to quilt one inch squares. That's two and a half centimeter square diamonds on your fabric it's very simple what you're going to need to do is so on my throat plate it's got all of these super handy markings if you haven't got these super handy markings you can use a ruler but i'll show you how to use the markings here so on my throat plate i can see that that 20 actually denotes two centimeters away from my needle so that's my needle and that's the two centimeter mark so i know that two and a half centimeters is equivalent to one inch so i'm just going to jiggle the bar it takes a, a little bit of time because as i said it's quite stiff because it needs to be stiff i'm going to wiggle that bar until the tip of that bar reaches the two and a half centimeter mark that's the two centimeter here and this next line is two and a half centimeters so i'm just going to pop that down now, let's pretend that annoyingly, you haven't got these markings on your throat plate. So if you don't have the markings on your throat plate, it's also very easy to get the measurement that you need. You just lift up the little bar a bit, you take your ruler and you measure from the tip of your needle to the bar to get yourself from the tip of the needle to the bar, two and a half centimeters or three centimeters or whatever size diamonds you want to create. So that's me at two and a half centimeters and I would be now ready to sew. So the first thing you'd need to do is you'd need to get your fabric. I'm not doing a quilt sandwich today. I'm just quilting some fabric, which has got some fusible fleece fused to the side because that's what I need my diamonds on. It would be the same principle if you were quilting a quilt sandwich. The first thing you need to do is you need to stitch your first line, be that a, um, I'm, I've done diagonal line because I want diamonds, but if you wanted squares, it doesn't matter. As long as you just stitch your first line and then I would use a chalk marking to make that line perfectly straight so that you could stitch your first line perfectly straight. Because if you imagine you've stitched the line and it's a bit wonky, then all of your resulting squares of diamonds are going to be wonky. So really take the time to mark your initial line with a chalk 
and a ruler. And that way, that will ensure you good results throughout the rest of your diamonds or squares. So now that I've got that first line stitched in, all I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this first line of stitching is going to line up with this quilt bar. And you know, as you can see, it easily moves up and down. And I'm just going to press that down because I want to I want to use that as a guide. It's a bit tricky doing everything and holding a phone in your hand. We've never quite got enough hands or table space, have we? That is just the law of the things. Okay, right, so that looks good. My needle is also going to hit the f fabric. I'm just going to push the needle down, gonna just push the foot down, and then, and then I would sew. Now, I'm not going to sew because uh, it's very hard to sew and hold the phone. But when I start sewing, rather than looking at what the needle is doing here, as I sew, I'm going to make sure that the guide always remains running through this stitch line because that is what's going to ensure that this stitch line is going to run perfectly parallel to this stitch line, but always at an inch apart because that's what I set this bar to. I set the bar one inch apart from the needle. So rather than looking at this as you sew, you just look at this, super easy. And then that's how you create parallel lines that will always be perfectly equidistant from each other. And then when you've sewn all of your lines in one direction, you just simply stitch yourself one more perfect line in the perpendicular direction and then get use your bar again. So easy, perfect results every time. I'll just mention one more thing. So because I'm sewing with a, a Shinomi, um, Shinomi has a AccuFeed system. So anybody who knows me at all, I'm always yamming on about how amazing walking feet are and that I use my sewing machine with a walking foot 95% of the time. I only attach this normal foot for the processes of for the purposes of this video because I wanted to show you where you would insert the bar into a normal shank. But the Janome comes with an AccuFeed system, which is their equivalent of a walking foot. And then you all you need to do is you would attach the bar and insert it through this hole here. So actually, to sew all of the lovely diamonds that I'd sewn before, I'd used a walking foot because I always use a walking foot and I attached the um, bar into there. So there you are. That is a quick explanation. Hopefully that was clear for you of how to use a quilt bar. Now you notice this one, the bar extends out to the right. You can also purchase bars that extend out to the left. Because if you appreciate, if I was to push this bar into the left side, then you're going to, you'll find that the bar face is completely the wrong way and that you won't be able to use it as a guide. So you can actually purchase longer bars and you can also purchase bars that extend out to the right and to the left. Most machines, if they do come supplied with a bar, you'll, you'll end up getting a bar that comes out to the right. But as I say, if you want one to the left, you can buy ones that go to the left. I hope that was useful um, and I hope uh, you like what you heard. Um, please subscribe to my um, YouTube and um, hopefully see you again soon. Take care. Bye.